Evita, can an inexp inexperienced therapist cause harm when putting somebody into hypnosis? Well, yes, of course. Uh, hypnosis is a state of receptivity. Uh, it's not conscious receptivity. Of course, it's unconscious receptivity to new ways of thinking and feeling and believing and doing and behaving. So, you know, a client is kind of vulnerable when they're in this state of receptivity. Uh, and depending on how receptive they are, of course, they can be either able to, to push away something that's not doesn't feel right or they just take it on board because they're highly receptive it depends on how the questions and the uh, suggestions are delivered by the therapist so an inexperienced hypnotherapist can indirectly say the wrong thing without even realizing and cause harm of course yes let me give you an example from my own experience okay and this was, where was this? This was in a place called, uh, where was it? Har Harlow, was it Harlow? I think it was Harlow in Essex in England. And this was back, back in the early days when I was first started practicing. And it taught me a valuable lesson. And I was doing a talk to something they called 18 plus groups back then. I don't know if they still exist. It's basically people between 18 and 30 who get together and have a social event and talk about things. And they asked me to give a talk and I gave a talk and they said, oh, how about a demonstration of, of hypnosis? Because I used to do this in order to get clients, you know, and do demonstrations of different clubs and places to get clients. And so I, I had this uh, one guy who was very tall. I remember he, had, he was very tall. I'll explain why I remember that in a moment. It'll be obvious. And he was sitting down in the chair and I'd hypnotized him and he was a very good subject. And all I did was I, I made the mistake of pausing mid sentence with one of my suggestions and it had a completely different response from what i was intending what i said to him was something like this there's no one here that understands how you're feeling you know what that means it means he's having a special own experience there's no one here that understands how you're feeling but i i, I paused i said there's no one here before I could get the next word out, he opened his eyes. He responded to the suggestion, there's no one here. He looked around. He had a negative hallucination for everybody in the room. He looked around, looked very confused. He stood up, went over to the uh, stand where they hang your coats. He got his coat and he put his coat on to leave. <laughs> Wow, that taught me a valuable lesson, right? I walked over to him and I grabbed him by the shoulders and turned him round by the shoulders. That's why I said how I remember he was so tall because I had to do it up here, you know. <laughs> and I turned him round and I looked at him and I, I can't remember what I said, I don't remember now, but I led him back to the chair and he was in a sto total kind of confused state, but definitely trance, okay. Now, he would have gone out maybe in some kind of trance state and who knows what could have happened so i took him back put him back in the chair again so this is an example you know we have this tremendous responsibility when we're working with our clients they're trusting us and we have to take that very very seriously not lightly um, which is why i think when you have an understanding of, of ericsson's work you realize the power and influence of implication it's not just what you say, it's, it's what you can imply that will be just as powerful and effective. And in those cases, you may imply the wrong thing. So, yes, to answer your question, Evita, an inexperienced therapist can cause harm when putting somebody into hypnosis. How do you avoid that? Come and train with Stephen Brooks. <laughs> You have to get good training, whoever you're working with, whoever you're training with, get good training, especially when it comes to things like Ericsson. Okay, get good training, because then you're equipped to go out into the world and start seeing clients and feel more confident and positive. You know the things that can go wrong, as well as the things that can go right. You have to know both sides, okay, so that you're prepared and aware that, you know, you as a person are a very powerful tool. In fact, in, in how you interact with people, et cetera, et cetera. 
and you're using uh, altered states where people are very, very receptive, where their conscious mind is out of the way and their, their true self, their unconscious mind, that's a true self, the part that actually makes all their decisions for them and then gives those answers through to the conscious mind so you can carry it out. You're right in contact with the, with the boss, if you like. So you have to be very, very careful and very, very respectful. And your therapy has to come from the heart, not the head. You have to be a hypnotherapist for the right reasons, because you want to help people have wonderful lives, not just because you want to be able to control people and put them in and out of hypnosis and show off all this crap. That makes a bad therapist, I'm sorry, because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. The client always comes first, more important than anybody else in your life at that moment you're working with them. So remember that. Okay, well, thank, thank you for that uh, question, Avita.